This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. It's an emergency pod for us here at Mizzou. That's who your podcast for Missouri Athletics on KC Sports Network. I'm Tucker Franklin, joined as always by Gabe Diarman and Maggie Johnson. Look, by now, if you're clicked on this podcast, you know what we're talking about. We are talking about uh, Desiree Reed Francois. She's taking a job at the University of Arizona as their next athletic director. She uh, agreed to a five-year deal, which was finalized uh, pretty soon, Gabe. Uh, I would ask you how you're doing, but I know that the last few hours have kind of been a little bit of a uh, of, of a blur and as a, a, a just a, a whirlwind. Yeah, I would like to uh, thank Pete Thamel for wrecking my life, which uh, he's done a few other times. So I'd say this would be the the, right. the biggest one. Um, I. Uh, I have not talked to anybody yet who saw this coming. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody I know is barely stunned by it. Um, I, I, there are some reasons for it, I think, um, that we can certainly talk about. Um, but I think the prevailing thought is we knew there was maybe some friction. I don't think anybody expected it to reach this level at this point. Um, for her to take a pay cut in a, I mean, let's be honest. Everybody right now wants to be in the SEC in the Big Ten. Right. That's that's where everybody wants to be. And she just left it for the Big 12. Um, I can't say whether that was 100% her choice or not. Um, if it wasn't her choice, I think that's insanity on the part of whoever's choice it was. If it was her choice... Obviously, the things that we thought were maybe minor issues are not so light. Yeah, Maggie, your first thoughts when you uh, saw the tweet, heard the news, uh, wherever you were, your your first thoughts on uh, the decision. Yeah, I'm pretty devastated. I think I've been pretty open uh, on the podcast, uh, on Twitter, about how um proud I've been to have a, a female AD and ha- not just that but how great she's done at her job yeah. you know there's not very many uh female athletic directors not only just in the country but especially at the power five level I think she's done an amazing job I think she was very important in getting us the 62 million dollar donation I think she was very important at getting the 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 plans for the North End Zone project. And, you know, I talked to her, to her a little bit, even just last week, uh, very briefly, but, you know, just about, she told me I could reach out to her if I ever needed you know, to talk to her about anything. And I, I was very blindsided by this. So I'm pretty upset. It was a, it was a move that kind of, uh, even Pete Thamble in his, in his initial reporting said the surprise move will be fa- f- uh, finalized soon in, in his initial report. Gabe, you mentioned it off the top. Everyone seemed to be shocked by this. There was not anyone that necessarily anticipated to see this coming. And a move that's very interesting, is, as Gabe has also you mentioned, from going from the SEC to now the new Big 12. Not only it's to a team that's going into the new Big 12, but a team that's facing a $177 million reported budget deficit. Uh, so a team that is like a, a school, I should say, um, that is not in a great place financially, seems like it's in a kind of a state of infl- they're in flux right now, going into a conference where they have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, the Big Ten, the SEC, those are your stabilizing pillars right now in college football, and you're leaving an SEC school uh, for that. There's been some uh, speculated reasoning uh, for this, Gabe. I know that the people brought up the the advisory committee, the advisory board, the oversight committee. Uh, look, personally, I didn't really know that that had happened just because I'd been so absol- absolved into uh, Chief Super Bowl stuff. And that happened around like Super Bowl week, everything like that. Uh, so maybe give us a little bit, of, Gabe, of uh, what that was, that the oversight committee uh, was supposed to be doing. Yeah, well, let me say, first of all, that I don't think this is in any way about Arizona. This is pretty clearly, I just don't want to be here. I want to be somewhere else. Um, it's a worse job. I, I mean, it just did yeah. the worst job. I don't, for less money, I don't really know how anybody could look at it and think otherwise. Um, so there are only two reasons you do that, either if you're told to do that or if your current working environment is to the point where you don't feel like it's worth it. Um, which one of those two happened, I don't know for sure. Um, but the oversight committee, I think 
needs some background to it. Um, and somebody, to their credit, on our board, when that happened, said, is this something to be concerned about? I said, nah, I don't really think this is anything. It's just a, another way for people to kind of look involved. I don't really think this is going to change a whole lot, all that. Well, if you go back to, I don't know, I think it was before the Kentucky game last year when Eli Drinkwitz was ex- was extended. But we're talking 2023 here. Look, I, I'm not. I'm not talking out of school. I'm not saying anything I have not said on Power Mizzou. So, for anybody that subscribes, this listening, you've heard all this. This is not new information. Um, that was a curator-driven extension. Uh, the board of curators. Well, first of all, they were the ones that hired him. I mean, Jim Stark wanted to hire Blake Anders or Skip Holt, or there was a third guy in there. I can't even remember who it was. But he brought three finalists, and the curator said these guys all suck. Go get us somebody that doesn't suck. And he came back with Eli Drinkwitz. Um, now, I don't really, I still don't really know who found Drinkwitz. But the point is, the plane that took people for the final interview with Eli Drinkwitz included multiple members of the board of curators. That is not normal. That is not how these things normally happen at the University of Missouri. He was their football coach. They hired him. They were behind him. The old AD got fired in part because he didn't hire him. And the new AD wasn't the one who made the decision. He was their football coach. They felt, and and then they gave him an extension, which frankly, I said at the time, I wouldn't have done. A lot of people said, this is nuts. He's under 500. What are we doing? Um, That was their decision. That was not the decision of the athletic director. I don't believe that was the decision of the university president. Now, did they sign off on it? Did they say all the right things publicly? Absolutely. That was a curator extension. Goes out, goes 11 and 2. And well done, curators. You were right. You were right on your gut. um, I was wrong. I wouldn't have extended them. They made the right decision. Felt a little more emboldened. In this, I, I still don't know what this oversight committee is. It is basically the four curators who I know to be probably the most interested in, the most involved in college athletics. Um, Could some of these people, look, they they don't, I mean, they're administrators. They're in business. They they probably don't much care about it. I mean, they care about it. You get my point. They're not as involved. So these four curators are involved. Um. Let me read the exact description of the thing. Um, it is a new oversight committee committee that will monitor. I'm reading from the Columbia, Missouri story. I didn't write a story about it because that's how unimportant I thought this was. That will monitor Mizzou athletics amid broad changes to college sports and rising spending by the athletic department. The UM system board of curators voted unanimously to create the Mizzou Intercollegiate Athletics Special Committee during its regularly scheduled meeting. Let me ask you guys, if not monitor Mizzou athletics amid broad changes to college sports, if that is not the athletic director's job, what is the athletic director's job? Right. What purpose does she serve? That is her job. And they just created a committee. I, I mean, if Rivals.com came to me and said, we're creating a committee to provide content and moderate PowerMizzou.com, I'd say, peace, I'm out. Like, I, yeah. you don't you don't want me here now or in the very near future, you're going to not want me here. This seems pretty clear. Um, So, she grabbed the life raft um, because I don't, I don't have any information that she was forced out as of today. Again, I think it would be really dumb if she was forced out. But I think she probably saw that and said, well, the least she's short. The basketball coach I just hired is currently in a disastrous season. The football coach I wasn't sure, I didn't hire, wasn't sure we should extend, just finished number seven in the country. Um, Maybe I shouldn't stick around here and let them decide my fate. That is my opinion. Nobody has flat out told me that. Everyone who I've talked to tends to agree with me. Um, but, you know, the curators aren't going to tell me. Uh, Desiree has not responded to my messages. Um, you know, so that's my guess. There's some 
you know, how social media is. And I feel like that's kind of a little bit of my what I bring up sometimes on our podcast. But, you know, there's there's talk of like tampering and weird stuff that like we there's absolutely zero proof to from anybody. We don't have any whatever. But there's been talk. So I'm just asking you because that's what we talk about on here. But do you think that there's like any proof that she maybe would have left Mizzou before Mizzou got in any type of trouble for anything or anything like that? I mean, I'll never say never, right? But like Tennessee's got the NCAA in court. So what if the NCAA comes and says you broke rules? The answer is you have no rules and you can't enforce them. I, I don't think so. Um, you know, uh, again, I don't have any proof of that. I, I don't know. Um, but that's the the frustrating part for Mizzou fans. It was all going apparently so well. And I'm I'm gonna gonna use this in in the posts I make when we're done with this show. Apparently, Mizzou athletics the last year and a half has been like the duck, right? Like you look at it and it's so graceful and everything's so smooth and underwater and all this stuff's going on that you just don't see. And uh, that all kind of came to the surface, I think, today. And again, these situations, nobody's ever really going to say. Um, we're just kind of left to piece it together. Um, but I would say over the last 21 years, I've managed to piece a lot of things like this together. And I don't think this one takes a whole lot of... Uh, intelligence to figure out well it's kind of crazy though too because do you remember like maybe two years ago you heard a lot of rumors that things were kind of bad in the athletic department that there was turmoil in the athletic department and then Desiree took over and then you kind of didn't hear that stuff maybe they had gotten rid of some bad pieces there and that turmoil kind of went away I mean you don't you don't really hear that anymore yeah look to be to be fair I, and and I think this is important for me to say I'm probably biased in looking at this. I've enjoyed working with her more than any AD I've covered. She's a human being. Um, she goes out of her way to show an interest in our lives other than a transactional relationship, and I think that's valuable. Um, she's been very good in her dealings with me, so I'll admit to probably being a little bit biased. Um, yeah, you heard a lot of... When she first took over, I heard a lot of, this sucks, I don't like this, she's hard to work for, all that. Well, guess what? Like what I told all those people is, well, you've sucked at pretty much everything for seven years. Maybe it was about time somebody came in and shook things up, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe the way you were doing things didn't work very well, so maybe it was okay to try a new thing. You know, um, I know her first day on the job, like she started a meeting, and you weren't in your seat when that meeting started. The door got locked, and you didn't get into that meeting. Um, you had to wear certain things at, at work, certain colors, all that. She had rules. Um, people didn't like them. That's fine. Um, but it's her department. She got to make the rules on the surface. Everything looked pretty good. Football team, top 10. Basketball team won a NCAA tournament game for the first time in 13 years. They're making laws in the state to help Mizzou athletics that other states are following. Right. They're getting money poured into the place. The facilities are all improving. The game day experience is improving. The antlers are allowed to be there. <laughs> Everything seems to be going well. Right, the last one you can debate whether you think that's good or not, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I, everything seemed to be going pretty well, and uh, I think we just underestimate how much egos and politics get involved in these things. You, and the more money that's involved, the bigger the egos, and the more the politics. You know, um, it seems like maybe it should be the opposite, but it is not. Um, yeah, I think it's unfortunate for Missouri fans that. You're in this place where everything seemed to be going so well. And maybe the next person will be great. Um, you know, maybe maybe the next person will just build on this and everything will keep rolling. And maybe Eli Drinkwitz is really the key to the whole thing or the curators or Dennis Gates or whoever. Um, but this is, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's great news today. I, I don't think you'd want to make a change if you had a choice. No, I don't I don't think so. And I want to read uh Desiree Reed Francois's statement that she posted to her Twitter account. Uh, I will read that here. My heart is filled with gratitude and nostalgia reflecting on the incredible journey we've shared together at Missouri as I embark on the next step in my journey. I want to express my deepest gratitude for our community and supporters for your unwavering support of the Tigers and the incredible 550 student athletes here at Mizzou. Your passion for our teams, your boundless energy in the stands, and your unwavering dedication 
have been the driving force behind our success. Your presence at games, your support, and your spirit have truly made our athletics program something special. Leaving behind such an amazing fan base is not easy, but as I embark on this new chapter back to my alma mater, I carry with me the cherished memories of our time together. Thank you once again for your unwavering support, your passion, and your dedication. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve as your director of athletics with heartfelt appreciation, Desiree. That was posted to her Instagram account at about 11.55 a.m. A few, it's probably about 30 minutes after the news dropped um, in terms of uh, her leaving for Arizona. Now, look, I, I know that that's a big thing of her going to Arizona. We talked about, you know, that kind of being, well, frankly, a step down uh, when it comes to uh, to jobs in the athletic department. Now Mizzou's going to be tasked with trying to find someone to fill the role that they now have vacant that they didn't really anticipate and see coming. But we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, let's talk about maybe some names that we should be looking at. Gabe, I saw you uh, made a tweet of a, of a hot board, an AD hot board we can go over, uh, something we're looking for, and a whole lot more coming up next. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest-ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. kcsn.substack.com. Welcome back into Mizzou. That's who. Give it our reactions to uh, Desiree Reed Francois leaving the University of Missouri to take the athletic director position at the University of Arizona, um, which I saw somebody called Debt University, which is a very interesting uh, way to put it. But uh, look, now Missouri's faced with a hiring that they didn't necessarily anticipate making uh, in February. Uh, not a great time to have to try to make this hire. But uh, Gabe, as we start to kind of look at who could be available for this position. Now, look, I guess everyone's available contracts. Everyone's we, available. Yeah, we, we talk about these contracts in this industry. And look, it's just how much you have to pay them to leave. Um, who are some names that you're kind of keeping an eye on when it comes to the next Missouri Athletic Director? So I reported this back when Desbury was hired. The other two finalists were Ren Baker, who at the time was at North Texas. He is now at West Virginia. He was Mac Rhodes' number two guy here. I know some people will hear that and go, oh, God, no, please, no. Ren Baker's great. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll hold the sign, go hire Ren Baker if Missouri can get him back. Um, my guess would be they probably can't. He's got a power five job. He just moved his family a year, year and a half ago. I know Ren well enough to know that that was a tough decision for him. And I don't think he probably is going to voluntarily go do it again. Although Missouri is certainly closer to home for his family and his wife's family than Morgantown, West Virginia is. Um, If that doesn't happen, the other finalist was Laird Veach, who was at Memphis. He worked uh, at Mizzou under Mike Alden back in the day. I think he will probably, like if I had to, if we were doing a DraftKings betting board on this, he would be my betting favorite um you know i think he would probably take it um although given everything we've been talking about for the last 15 minutes um i don't know maybe familiarity with missouri is not necessarily a uh selling point uh the third name that's come up from a couple people i know is mark allnut who's at buffalo he played football at missouri he worked every job in the missouri athletic department did hire lance leopold and uh Nate Oates at Buffalo, so got an eye for talent. Those programs have slipped a little bit since those coaches left. Um, yeah, I, I am sure Mark would take the job. I mean, you know, he's he's from the area, um, played played football here. I, I can't see a scenario where you really get past those three names, but I don't know. Maybe they have some list that I don't know about. I know it, the, the last time they hired an AD, I had people ask, like, how did you – how did you know who our candidates were? We tried to keep this secret. Well, it's common sense. It's not like nobody has to tell. You. Like, just look at what makes sense here. Who who could who could be on this list? And those three names, I think, will lead Missouri's list. In all likelihood. I feel like this is one of those situations where, like, what are athletic directors kind of looking for? Like, are they looking to make more money because you see Desiree took less money? Most power five schools outside of the Big Ten and the SEC would be making more money. So you look at people like 
Gene Taylor at K-State? Like, would he leave a place like K-State and come to Mizzou? When, I mean, K-State athletics are pretty good right now. He's making probably 200, 300K, probably 200K, less than he's making at, like, or he would be making 200K more at Mizzou than he's making at K-State, but would K-State pay him more? So it's kind of like, what are people looking for? But then you look at all these people that have been leaving Mizzou for um, homelands, right? You see Blake Baker leaving um, Mizzou for L- LSU and his wife's homeland. And, you know, he's, I think, from down there, or at least he played at Tulane. And then you see Desiree leaving for Arizona, which, you know, is her alma mater. So is that important? I don't know. I don't know. Do we want to hire somebody with that familiar familiarity? I don't I don't know what's important anymore. I think it just de- it just good depends from the person, right? But like that is an interesting comparison to draw between the two kind of big gut punches in Mizzou athletics the past couple of times we've been talking about. Uh bad things that happened to the Mizzou Athletic Department having both people going to their homeland, I guess is a good way to put it, Maggie. Uh, because not necessarily Blake Baker, not necessarily from LA, like didn't go to LSU, but I mean, his I know his wife has a lot of ties to the university, but he's from Louisiana and all that stuff. But I think it's an interesting tie, but I don't know if it necessarily I I really, it probably varies. I really just don't think this is about Arizona. Um, I mean, look, Desiree turned down interest from USC, what, four, six months ago? Like, literally, I posted on our board, hey, hearing her name pop up a little bit at you. USC and I'm not kidding it was less than five minutes later I got a call she has no interest in going to USC so like it was all good this isn't this isn't Arizona is a job I, this isn't Mike Anderson having Arkansas pop up yeah this is Frank Hates to toll that that's that's the best I can come up with that I've covered this is they want me they will pay me pretty good money to do a job and I'm not sure you do one. I that's my opinion of, of what went down today. If again, if I hear anything different, if somebody wants to go on the record and call me an idiot, fine. Um, but I don't anticipate that happening. At least not over this. Maybe no. It, it really is a shame to see. I mean, it it Missouri had such positive momentum going in that direction to have a. Uh, a committee formed into what we speculate, we should say, uh, was uh, something that kind of led to this. To, I mean, we, I already talked about the Arizona job. It's like it's not a good job. Like I, I like it's that's another thing that goes into it. It's like it's not an attractive job. Like they were trying, they were struggling to find football coaches to go there. They're struggling to find athletic directors to go there. It's it's that university is not in a good situation. Like that's it's. It's tough to see that from from the Missouri side to see your athletic director go to a worse position into the Big 12, which a conference that's going to be in just a constant state of flux uh, with how college football is. And it's easy for us to look at this from the college football side of things, right? I keep referring to it as a college football side of things. It, it, it's all that matter. It is. It, it is. I know she has attributed to a lot of other success in, in the Missouri realm of things other than college football, right? Uh, but that's that's the huge money maker. That's what makes these schools profitable in a lot of these a lot of these uh, places. But it just got, it just took me by surprise. Yeah, I know it took everyone by surprise. But I mean, I was good. I was trying to tweet good stuff about Patrick Mahomes, and now I gotta I gotta come and try to figure out a, an athletic director. And that's hey, we were all we were just gonna talk about Tommy John surgery today. That was gonna be the plan. <laughs> talk about how the how they were gonna need to get a quarterback at the spring transfer window. That was probably going to come up, I assume. We were going to power rank a bunch of different stuff. We were trying to figure out topics, but now we don't have to. And I don't want I didn't want to talk about this game. Yeah, it's always that. Look, in, in what I do, here's the worst thing you can do is wake up and go, I think it's going to be an easy day today. Yep. Went to the gym. I got my story written. I was like, I don't have much to do. Get some stuff done around the house. My wife's going to be so happy when she gets home. Now, I'm going to be sitting in front of my computer screen, and she's going to be like, nothing got done, and where's food? And I'm going to be like, yeah, um, it's in Tucson, Arizona. That's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
this is this is what's worse about the like what the worst part is is now like you mentioned you're just glued to your computer you're glued to your phone trying to figure out what happens next like just trying to get the little bit of information uh that'll come out and obviously these things do take just, time. Look, just just follow pete thamel on twitter he's gonna break it guys like i'll just tell you right now he breaks it all he's gonna break it so just follow him and when he fought when he tweets who it is then come and watch our youtube channel for reaction because that's how these things work there you go that's- and like me i want to stay off of all the social media because everybody's messaging me and being like sending me the same thing and i'm like i know i know i know i saw it thanks thanks yeah. like as if like they're the first person that sent it to me and it's like an hour after and i'm like i saw it thank you thank yeah. you yeah. well I think from my monitoring of social media that I've been doing, it just feels like that people already on social media have been going through the stages of grief. I saw people pissed off. I saw people sad. I saw people shocked. You know, and people were mad at Desiree. They're mad at the university. We're going through all the stages of grief in like 15 minutes when this thing was announced. Um, I think I've seen a tone shift already since we've started recording this podcast and kind of how things have uh, developed in terms of uh, Desiree's decision to leave. I think a lot of people were immediately upset at her, but now I think it, the, the tone has definitely shifted um, for, for now that the more information comes out. Crazy how you can do that, right? Uh, change your opinion when more information comes out. Um, <laughs> I think the tone has definitely shifted uh, into being upset at the university. And I, I think people rightfully do have a, have, have a reason to be upset. Things were going good. And uh, for something to happen like this when you have such positive momentum is is certainly frustrating. That That's the thing to me. If I'm a fan sitting at home watching my football team finish in the top 10, waiting for my basketball team to get this top five recruiting class yeah. on campus, I'm going, you couldn't work this out? Right. Like, well, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Like, she was doing the job you hired her to do well. Um, you couldn't find a way to make this work. And, and look, that's not a one-sided thing, right? I'm sure Desiree has some has some uh, culpability there too. So I don't want to make this all one-sided. You know, uh, anytime a union doesn't work out, there are two sides of the story and two people deserve some level of blame. You can assign whatever percentage you want based on the little we know. Um, I know how I, I would assign it, but I don't think it probably well a it probably doesn't need to be said and b it probably doesn't do any good to say it but right both sides share some in here and you just look at both sides and say what do you think of the kids man you can't just stay married mm-hmm. until the kids go off to college kids were doing well they were happy everything was good they were getting happy meals and their team was winning and they got a new dog yeah you just said it's off we leave it but like haven't they how about we learn from the mistakes of so many other universities too like you watch this for year well, in university and, let's not well, pretend this is new yeah Missouri. that's that's true yeah. mizzou too but like you have also watched this for years at like texas a&m in texas auburn. i've had all auburn like oh my gosh auburn in recent years terrible but like the all the amount of money like Texas and Texas A and M have had for years, and you've just watched that coaching carousel just go round and round and round because of their board of curators and the amount of like hands in the cookie jar and like how much say they've wanted to have in the locker room and all of that. And you've just watched it for years, and that's why they haven't had success in in the twenty tens. And it's just been terrible. And it's like, why can we just not learn? Like, why can we just, like, not look at that and just learn anything? And here's the thing. I don't... This may be easy for me to say because I have, like, a fake job and I don't really work with people. <laughs> so th- this doesn't apply to me, but it applies to normal grown-ups. You're never going to like everybody you work with. Mm. You work in an office with at least three people. Two of them are going to not like you. Like, that's how it works, right? There are people that in our network that I don't really get along with whatever but you you make it work um and i don't know why missouri couldn't make this work when everything was going well uh at least on the surface it was going well um but they couldn't 
find a way to swallow the egos and say, you know what? As long as we are winning games and people are giving us money and everything seems to be going so well, and stuff, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter if I like this person. She's doing a good job. Doesn't matter if I like those people over there. They're letting me run this department and it's going pretty well. You don't got to go out and get drinks together. You don't got to be friends. You don't even got to speak well of each other. Just work together. Just avoid each other and let every person do their job because it was going well. Um, and anytime you have to make a change, there is no go guarantee it will continue to go well. Yeah. I don't know if we want to talk about anything else. If, if we should just leave this podcast as just this as a whole. I've got like put a put a bow on more stuff to do on this. So <laughs> look, no, I you guys I, can talk about other things should you want to. I don't even know if I feel I don't want to talk about Sam Horn getting UCL surgery. So <laughs> great reporting by by you, Gabe, and to get that out there. And uh but I don't, I don't wanna I don't wanna be sad anymore, Gabe. When does it end? When does the sadness end? Uh, first game's like August 31st or something like that. So I guess then maybe, maybe it right. Maybe then. Wait, so that's a long time before then. the transfer portal still opens again. I mean, the, no, look, 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 I the, and the truth is they'll hire somebody and Desiree is not the only person who can do this. Well, yeah. Right. Like yeah. It, this, I think she deserves some credit for what happened. I don't think she did it alone. Eli deserves credit. Yeah. The curators deserve credit. Moon Choi deserves credit. Uh, oh, oh, what about the players? They should get some credit, right? So she did not build this thing all on her own, and now Missouri sucks and Arizona's great. Like, yeah. the job of the next person is just come in here and like, look, it's all going pretty well. Hold on to the damn wheel. Mm -hmm. Keep us on the road. Don't drive us into the ditch. And that shouldn't be that hard to do. As long as... These people that are giving $62 million want to keep giving money and paying for players. Like, Missouri can still be there. And, and I don't want this to be too down of a, oh, my God, what was me Mizzou podcast today. But it, like, I understand. I'm, I'm kind of annoyed by it. But there's no reason this can't continue. Mm, right. That's, uh, that's a good point. Um how Gabe, before we before we get out of here, do you anticipate this search to be uh, a quick search? Do you anticipate this to kind of be a uh, drug out? We just went through a defensive coordinator hiring that took a while, but uh, and you see some hires take seventy two hours. Uh, what what's kind of your gauge and your feel on this one? Yeah, I honestly don't really know. Um, you know, I I know the last time they did this, Moon Choi very much wanted to go meet with these people in person mm. after meeting with them. Like he wanted to go through the process. Now yeah. he just did this two years ago, two and a half years ago. Maybe he doesn't really have to do it again. Maybe it really is as simple as two phone calls. Hey, we were close last time. What do you think? Right. Um, and maybe that's it. Um, but I, I, I have learned my lesson not to put a time. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It, it could be done tomorrow and it could be done in October. I, I truly have no idea. I hope it's not. Yeah, that'd be. Awful. I just hope. I just hope they put somebody in that makes good contracts. We're still. We still have some stupid football games we're playing, like stupid, stupid football stupid. games from like old, like old ads put in place. And I know Desiree was working on, you know, rectifying some of that. And I just hope we get an ad in there that can keep working on what she was working on and just not put us back in those dumb contracts. The U Master going to this year? Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. That's bad. Um, so bad. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be beautiful, but it's bad. So. Yeah. It's, that stadium seems like 14,000 or something like that, right? It's like a it's like a small high school football stadium in Texas. Uh, but anyway, that's going to do it, I think, for this episode of uh, Mizzou That's Who, the emergency podcast. We'll we'll put Gabe out of his mercy for right now for this podcast, but I'm sure he's going to be doing a whole lot more at PowerMizzou.com. Make sure to go uh, follow him there. Uh, Maggie, appreciate you always uh, for hopping on and sadly l lamenting this uh, this decision, but that's going to do it for us. Uh, for Gabe DeArmer and Maggie Johnson, I'm Tucker Franklin. We'll catch you guys next week with hopefully a happier episode of Mizzou That's Who. We're just going to have to find out. We'll see you then.